What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to build a simple web browser in Python. And this is what it's going to look like in the end. We're going to have a basic browser, a URL bar, a go button, a back button, and a forward button. Of course, you can also implement another feature like, uh, I don't know, refresh or something. Um, and we're going to be able to navigate to neural9.com, for example, by just saying go. As you can see, it added the HTTP. We can also navigate to yahoo.com, for example. And we can also try to navigate to something that does not exist. So I don't know, this.com. And then we're going to see can't be reached. There you go. You can go back, back, and we can go forward again. So this is a very basic web browser that we're going to implement in Python today. So for this project, we're going to use PyQt5. We're not going to use TKinter for the graphical user interface. And this means that we need to install it by opening up CMD or your terminal of choice. And then call pip install pyqt5 like that. In my case, I already have it installed. Um, this is just for the basic graphical user interface. In addition to that, we're also going to need uh, pyqt web engine, I think. Yes, I always forget the name. Pip install pyqt web engine, which is what we're going to use for the web browser. In my case, I already have this installed as well. So once you have these installed, you can start by importing from pyqt5 dot qt widgets, import everything from pyqt5 dot qt GUI, import everything from pyqt5 dot qt core, import everything and from pyqt5 dot qt web engine widgets import everything. This is what we're going to need. And we're going to start by creating a basic class for our main window, we're going to call this my web browser, it's going to extend from Q main window. And it's going to call the init method here, we're going to call the super constructor. So super my web browser self dot underscore underscore init. And uh, we're going to pass arcs and keyword arguments here. Nothing too special, just calling the parent constructor. And inside of that, we're going to now create our GUI. So we're going to say self dot window is going to be um, self dot window is going to be Qt widget like that. And self dot window dot set window title is going to be um, neural nine web browser like that. Now, what is the problem up here? We have arcs keyword arcs. Oh, of course, our constructor doesn't have arcs and keyword arcs. There you go. Oh, there you go. Now, what's the problem here? Qt widget? Oh, it's Q widget. Come on. Stupid mistakes here. Okay, so we have the Q widget, we have the window, we set the window title to neural nine web browser. Um, and now we can start with the UI elements. Now, first of all, let's choose a layout, we want to have a, uh, a V box layout, so a basic vertical box layout. So we're going to say self dot layout is going to be Q V box layout, like that. And inside of that, we also want to have a horizontal layout for the buttons in the top. So we're going to say self dot horizontal is going to be Q H box layout. Now, what's the problem with the widget now? Uh, I don't see the problem with the widget, to be honest, parameter flags unfilled. Okay. I'm not sure that we need those. But let's just skip that for now. Um, so now we have the two layouts, and we're going to place the H box layout inside of the V box layout, because we want to have a vertical layout of UI elements, and then the web browser itself. And inside of the UI elements, we want to have a horizontal layout. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, and we're going to create first of all, the URL bar. So self dot URL bar is going to be Q text edit. Like that, then we're going to say self dot URL bar. Uh, we're going to set the maximum height to 30. Then we're going to have a button which is going to be the go button. 
And the go button is going to be a Q push button with a text go, obviously. And here we're going to set the minimum size to 30. Minimum height, not size. I'm going to set this to 30 so that we have the same size. Uh, we're going to copy that a couple of times and change this to back button and to forward button. There you go. And we're going to change the text here to forward or actually let's do it like that. There you go. So that should work set minimum height, minimum height, minimum height and the maximum height. So those are just the buttons, we can now add these to the horizontal uh, layout. So we're going to say self dot horizontal dot dot add widget, and we're going to add self dot URL bar. And we're also going to add the buttons. So self dot go button, self dot back button, and self dot forward button in that order. There you go. So we have the widgets now and then we're going to create the browser itself. So the self dot browser is going to be a uh, QT or actually a Q web engine view. I'm always confused by the Q web stuff. There's so many similar names. So Q web engine view is going to be the browser. And then we're going to say self dot layout dot add layout. And we're going to add at uh, self dot horizontal. And then we're going to add the widget, which is the web engine view. So the browser itself. There you go. Then for the browser itself, we're going to already set it to a starting page. So self dot browser set URL is going to be uh, a Q URL and it's going to be HTTP google.com like that. All right. So that's a basic web browser. And um, we will connect the buttons in a second. But first of all, we're going to say self dot window dot set layout, and it's going to be the layout. And then self dot window dot show. Oh, it's gonna be self dot layout. There you go. Now, we're going to do the application um, functionality in a second. Now let's just say app equals Q application. Um, and then window equals main, or actually what, what did I call it? My web browser. And then app dot exec. Let's see if this works. Uh, we need to pass an empty list here. There you go. So it doesn't have any functionality, but I mean, Google works, but we cannot do anything here because the buttons don't have any functionality uh, yet. But as you can see, the browser itself works and the UI looks fine. So we're now going to only have to implement uh, the functionality. Now, one thing I'm questioning right now is if we even need all of this here. So do I actually need um, do I actually need all of this here? Or can I just have this basic class like that? Let's just play around with it a little bit and see if it works. I think it should work like that as well. And I'm right, it works like that as well. We don't need to inherit from anything. So that was a little bit useless in the beginning. But now we have fixed that and let's continue with the function. So we want to have one basic function. And this function is called navigate. So we're going to call this function navigate self and we want to navigate to a URL. And we're going to say, okay, if that URL dot starts with uh, HTTP, then we're just going to navigate to it. Or yeah, if it starts with uh, starts with HTTP, we're going to navigate to it uh, by just saying, or actually, let's do it like that. We're going to say if it doesn't start with HTTP, if not URL starts with HTTP, then we're going to um, to say the URL is the URL, or it's going to be HTTP colon slash slash 
plus the URL like that. And we're also going to change that in the in the URL bar itself. So self URL bar dot set text, and we're going to say, this is going to be HTTP slash slash, and the URL. Yes, or actually, we can just set it to the URL directly, right? There you go. And what we're going to do in all the cases, so even if it was correct, uh, in the beginning, we're just going to say self dot browser dot set URL Q URL um, Q URL URL like that. And all we need to do now is we need to bind the buttons to the individual events. So what we want to do is we want to go to the uh, after the browser and we're going to say self dot go button dot clicked dot connect. And we're going to say we're going to have a lambda expression here. And we're just going to call self dot navigate to self dot URL bar dot to plain text. So by doing that, we get the text from the URL bar and we pass it to a navigate function. And since this is a lambda expression, we do not call it unless we actually call it. Uh, then we have the back button and the forward button. And here we don't need a lambda expression, we're just going to say, uh, what was it self dot browser dot back and self dot browser dot forward like that. And I think we're actually done now. This is uh, as simple as it gets. We don't need to GUI as it seems. So let's just remove that. And now we should be able to use the web browser. Let's see if we can navigate to neural nine.com. There you go. And it actually works. We can go back as well, we can go forward. And if I provide it correctly, HTTP slash slash uh, yahoo.com. It should also work. There you go. So this is how you build a simple web browser in Python. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.